Hey folks, it's Art Wolf. Welcome. We have an unboxing today, courtesy of Compass Games. This has just arrived. Coalition, the Napoleonic Wars, brand new release designed by Javier Garcia de Gaviola. Um, so it is quite a heavy box. Um, pretty traditional Compass Games two-inch box um, with a banner style title. Um, I kind of feel like they left Coalition off the side of the box, actually. I mean, I could be wrong. They put it there. Interesting. Anyway, let's uh, let's open her up and see what we got. This is, of course, a topic of interest to me. And I was a bit surprised when it arrived. So, very nice box. Okay, we have a tiny correction. Uh, that says the back of the box says three card decks. There is only one card deck that includes all the cards needed. Okay, so a piece of errata that is totally fine. Here is a clarification sheet. Um, well, if this is all the uh, errata and clarifications we have, then we're in fantastic shape. So we have a bag of baggies. These are relatively nice baggies, I have to say. Um, I, you know, I don't typically use baggies to sort my games, but I end up finding a use for these things. So, um, because there are games that just work best sorted into baggies. Okay, we have a deck of cards, which looks like roughly 60 cards. We'll look at that in a bit. We have six six-sided dice in thematically appropriate colors, I have to point out. I always like to see that when that, whoops, 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 whoops. Oh, we've got another Compass Games, uh thing here where where the counters are so thoroughly punched that they fall right out of the sheet so let's uh let's be careful with this let's look at the book first uh we have a shiny paper what well, feels like a 16 page 24 page book something like that 20 pages feels like about 20 pages this should be real and we'll see when we see the board um scan of the counter sheets which i always like to see uh, looks like we have a detailed example of play in the back, which, as I've said many times, I consider to be not optional. Uh, and I am usually fairly irritated when, when games do not include that. This does include that, so that's great. Um, so this appears to be a card-driven game. I don't know that it's conventionally card-driven, but I'll have to defer my opinion on that. Uh, the rule book is full color, glossy paper, relatively thick glossy paper, relatively, not super big print, but relatively large print. Nobody's going to, I think, nobody without actual significant vision problems is going to have eye strain problems with this rule book. All right, we're going to have to extract the counter sheets with care. Yes, as you can see, uh, we've lost a couple more here. <laughs> so we have one two counter sheets and they're pre-rounded they're the type of pre-rounded counters so folks who have a big problem with clipping their counters to make them look nice you won't have to do that with these and lord knows you won't have to exert much effort to clip them because you can pretty much i could probably I'm, I'm tempted to try this now yeah of course it's not working now that it's on camera i kind of figured the entire all the counters would just fall out of the sheet when I did that. So, looks like we've got uh, the counters represent armies and or leaders. Possibly both. Sounds like both. Um, so you've got, for, for the French, for example, you have Napoleon, who gets a rating of two. Um, one wonders if somebody, like, say... General Mack gets a zero, okay, so rather than a negative number. Uh, Marmont, uh, Messina, Soult, Eugène, uh, Yosef, MacDonald, Ney, Bernadotte, and Marat um, are the French generals. And then, of course, Bernadotte has a Swedish counter as well, which is interesting. I'm actually a little surprised they didn't just print that on the back of the French one, actually. All right, and then so for the French, or for the British, you've got Wellington and Nelson. For the Prussians, you're going to have Blucher and Brunswick. For the Russians, you're going to have Kutuzov, uh, Benningsen, uh, Barclay de Tolly, and Wittgenstein. And for the Spanish, you'll have Castaños. So, and for the uh, for the Austrians, you've got Karl, which is Archduke Charles, by the way, uh, Bellegarde, Mack, 
uh, in Schwarzenberg. Okay, so counters carefully out of the way. Let's put these over here on top of the rule book so I can get them back in the box seamlessly. We have some player aid cards here. Single-sided player aid cards, uh, which is which is you know interesting interesting feature that you only need one side of a player aid card here. So we have a battle matrix which looks like a CRT to me. Um, we have an attrition matrix. Attrition is a typical feature in games on this particular topic. Um, and then we have a surrender table and a, and a sort of detailed sequence of play, which is also nice to see. Um, I always feel like that ought to be on the player aid card. And admittedly, for like experienced players, it's probably not necessary, but you know, not everybody, nobody starts out as an experienced player, you know what I'm saying? So let's put this away and take a look at the board. Now the board is mounted here, so uh, I've got to figure out how to show this to you because my, you can't see it, but my area that we're filming this in is super cluttered. <clears throat> you have no idea. So, interesting, 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 interesting. Now I've seen pictures of the map, of course, uh, on the website. All right, so what I see here is a mounted map, and if it's if it seems like it's not laying flat, that's, I think, more of a function of how I'm laying it down here. I, I'm laying it down on top of my mat, and then on top of this board, which is covering up the game that I have on the table at the moment. Um, so we have a artistically, I think, really nice-looking map. Um, th this is clearly an area control type of thing. I didn't want to say area movement because... Uh, the granularity appears to be pretty low, so area movement is probably not the word I'm looking for. Uh, but we have, like, France is one space, the region of the Rhine is one space. Prussia looks like it's two spaces, and then low countries get another one, but they're part of France during much of this period anyway. Um, and then we've got places for the various draw piles, and a couple of tracks for game turns. Looks like this runs from 1805 to 1815. Uh, the VP and Gloire points track. I always have trouble pronouncing that particular French word. Uh, recruitment points and economic points. And then we have boxes for War of 1812 and Spanish America, and the Russo-Swedish War, and the Russo-Turkish War, which probably drains off either Russian or British forces to an off-map area, which is also a thing that is not terribly uncommon in games on this particular topic. Um, the map has a uh, sort of a matte finish that I rather like. Um, it's not like completely matte, but it's got sort of a velvety type of finish. It, similarly, actually, a little bit to the uh, thin red line counters. It feels like there's a coating on it of some kind. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty attractive map. Um, Looks like an interesting game, and we may try to... So, as you're probably aware, we've got a you know, problem getting people together for games at the moment. But I think my regular hardcore grognard folks are probably not going to be super interested in this. However, the regular board gaming folks very well might be uh, when we can get them back to the table again. Uh, as of this exact moment, the hardcore wargaming folks are playing again. Because there's, you know, three of us in a room, so it's not, not that bad. Um, whereas the board gaming people are not yet. Now, here's the cards. And like I said, it looks like there's about 60 cards. Uh, the cards are, I'd say, typical playing card stock. A little heavier than that, I think. Uh, they feel good. They, they, they don't, they're not sticky, uh, which a lot of game cards are. Some game cards feel overly thick and therefore susceptible to things like chipping. Uh, these don't feel like that. Uh, looks like these are, there are home cards, which I think, so here's Confederation of the Rhine, United Kingdom, the Low Countries, uh, Coalition card, Sixth Coalition, interesting. Okay, so we have, so we have three different decks here, it looks like, which is why it got misstated on the back. Not misstated exactly, because there's actually three different decks, but they're all together in the same pack. Home cards, coalition cards. Let's see, we have uh, numbered coalition cards. That's an interesting piece of flavor right there. So third coalition, uh, Austria, Russia, Sweden, and the Kingdom of Naples are pro-United Kingdom. Okay, so that's interesting. 
I wonder how those get played. This makes me more curious about the game now, actually. And there's these home cards. So this runs from the third coalition. So I see a third, a fourth, and a sixth. And I'm missing some because I didn't catch them. The, the, I mean, you can clearly see co says coalition card on the back, but the color is not that different, at least not in this exact lighting. Which is unfortunate because there's literally an extra light above the table for this unboxing video. And here's the seventh and last coalition. <laughs> Which is, is pretty much everybody versus Napoleon. Um, literally everybody. Now this seems to think that Spain is uh, a toss-up, which is an interesting mechanic. I'm not sure how much of a factor that's going to be in the Seventh Coalition situation. Uh, very much depends. Uh, but the granularity here looks um, high enough that maybe that's uh, not an issue. So uh, this looks pretty interesting. I'd like to thank, uh, thank Bill from Compass for sending me a copy of this. Uh, it looks quite interesting, and I would like to now try to get this to a table. Um, so what we have seen then, and like tr trying to get everything back in the box in an orderly way, which is difficult when the counters are falling out of the sprues. That's not a complaint, by the way. It's just amusing to me that the counters just pop out like that. Uh, component quality looks, looks pretty nice. Um, none of the included errata is Troublesome, uh, troublesome particularly and the box is it's in a very thick box too i presume this is probably printed in china um so i would like to thank you for watching um please i'll put a link to the product page if you're interested in this uh, on compass games website in the video description so check that out um if you are in fact interested and uh please be sure to like the video if you found it uh, interesting or entertaining or otherwise valuable please subscribe to the channel and click the little bell icon to get notified when new content comes out if you'd like to support art wolf slayer there are links to the merch store and patreon page in the video description so check those things out um or you can also you can always support our wolf lair just by sharing the video around that's much appreciated when it occurs i do appreciate you watching thanks very much and until next time happy wargaming <laughs>